Okay, we're ready to start. So, hello. I am uh, Shaban Shami. I'm uh, happy to be here in Lisbon with a uh, public, a good public. Of course, we are at the NFT conference, so everybody here is uh, probably an NFT fan, no hater. Is there NFT haters uh, out there? <laughs> no, okay. So we'll explore um, NFT, what do I really own? And this question was touched in the talk uh, before, but uh, let's dig into it. Just before about me, so I'm Shaban Chame, the um, founder of Eva Dreamsoft, a Swiss-based company. Uh, produced Spells of Genesis in 2015, which is probably the first game using tokenized assets uh, on chain. <laughs> I'm also the um, treasurer and co-founder of uh, Blockchain Game Alliance, and since then working a lot in the space, building tools, wallets, and so on. So, decentralized ledger. Um, let's go back in history, and that was a touch uh, in the previous talk, we were talking about uh, land ownership. Um, if we go back in history, um, before, in the prehistory, pre um, people were owning things, um, and it was not written anywhere. It was in the mind of people. So if I had a house and somebody else had another house and we want to make a transaction, what we do is we go on the campfire and I would say, okay, I sell or exchange the house and everybody in the village uh, knows that uh, the, um, the transaction occurs. So uh, Shaban don't own this house anymore and uh, it's uh, now Jack's house. And after that, when, uh, not from Alpine, but after that in uh, history, um, we were able to write ownership in books. And it's still the case today. Um, so banks or, or notaries, they're writing ownership in books and it allows us to live in bigger cities. Because you don't have to know everybody's possession uh, in order to live together. So that's what we still do uh, today, and it allows us to live in bigger city because of the invention of writing. And I like to compare the invention of blockchain to the invention of mathematics, because the invention of writing is a little bit like the invention of internet. So writing allowed to transfer knowledge across time and space, and internet allowed to do that instantly anywhere. But with writing, you can do mathematics. In mathematics, you can calculate ownership. So blockchain is to internet what mathematics is to uh, writing. So, the first idea of NFT or cryptographic ownership was brought by Hal Finney. Uh, I think it's, it's a genius. But he had the idea of making trading card game in 1993 um, using cryptography, which is a little bit what we still do now uh, using, uh, using blockchain. So, the first decentralized ledger, uh, the Bitcoin white paper, it's a little bit like coming back in time when we were sitting in front of a campfire and we make a transaction and I will tell everybody, okay, I made a transaction and everybody record in their mind that I don't own this house or this uh, object anymore, but I made a transaction. So blockchain is the same, is witnesses, but instead of having a centralized book, which is good from a scale of a city, for example, you can write everything in a book. On blockchain, it's global and instant. So it will allow us to live in bigger city, in bigger city 
in the metaverse. It, it allows uh, a sub-economy that is not at the city scale, but at the global scale. So the, for the first idea, so when you have a decentralized ledger, so it's very good for money, for currency, but the, fir the very first idea of using this ledger for something else than monetary um, with the name coin uh, was the first attempt to bring some art into, uh, into the ledger. And um, here is the, 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 first, uh, the first transaction, the first way to record uh, an image or something on chain happen on Namecoin. Then on top of Bitcoin came the idea of colored coin. Um, the idea of colored coin is taking a little fraction of Bitcoin and saying it, re it re represents something else, like for example art or game items or whatever. Then came Counterparty, that was a token um, layer on top of, uh, of Bitcoin, a little bit like colored coin, with some other feature. And Counterparty, there was thought for monetary, so to create token, other currency, sub-currencies, but with uh, Avadrim Soft and Spells of Genesis, we thought, okay, we could use this token, instead of using it for, for currency, we'll put game items, we'll put art, image, and that's how in 2015 we produced the, um, the first cards from a long series with Spells of Genesis. And at that time, we had a player base from the company before and not many understood what we were doing. Uh, so the player, the, the value added for the player um, was not big. They didn't really understood. Some, some made some wallets, but it was hard. And they were not very interested. But we found a new community of crypto enthusiasts who could understand um, what's behind all this. So uh, for Spells of Genesis, we wanted to uh, represent allegorically events that are happening on the cryptosphere, on the blockchain. And so we illustrated uh, Satoshi Nakamoto, the hack of the DAO, uh, the separation between Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash, because we thought that the card will stay for long and we want to embed the story of blockchain itself uh, in order to have them in museum in, uh, in 50 years. So bringing game item and our experience with game item and tokens, so let's explore what is exactly uh, that you own. So first of all, we mentioned the token, we mentioned the blockchain. So a token is a simple line writing, remember, on a, on a book, on a ledger. Uh, and it's a little bit like a property title for, uh, for a house, for example. So there is a house, which is the asset, and there is the property title that represents the ownership of the house. So the paper is not the house, and the house is not the paper, but the paper says you own that house. So there is a link between the token, the information on chain, and the underlying asset. And in the real world, we have the notary in the middle who certify that this paper actually represents uh, the ownership of the house. So on chain, you have a perfect property title, uh, a perfect token, so the token is auditable, non-duplicable, um, uh, transparent, but the asset, in other hand, that's another story. So around that, if we talk about the value of the, the Mona Lisa, I think half a billion uh, dollar for the painting. So what makes the value of Mona Lisa? It's not the image itself, of course, because you can buy prints of uh, Mona Lisa for much less money. 
but owning the real Mona Lisa doesn't make your living room uh, much more uh, attractive for half a billion dollars. It's the story behind the art, the owning the real piece. So the ownership is more important than the actual asset in that case. So we see it in the real world. Derivative, pro derivative. also people are doing things on top of uh, the Mona Lisa here and they are monetizing it. And that's a very interesting things that we see in the uh, NFT space that people are producing things, they are owning the, the thing and they can modify, they can modify, they can change, but we can still trace back uh, who owns and who created and where's the origin. So the, uh, on the NFT uh, issues, uh, I would say that there are still uh, today is I mentioned the asset is not the token. Um, so the link between the asset and the token can be broken. For example, if I do a fake whatever, the token will be there, it will be transparent, auditable, everything you want, but the asset actually is not real, uh, is not backed by the token. So scarcity, so, so we said the token, we can audit that it's uh, truly unique, but nothing prevents me to recreate my unique artwork on another blockchain, on another smart contract. So the tokens will be perfect, non-duplicable, but my asset, I, could, I can repu reproduce it. Um, also copyright, so I can draw a Mickey Mouse, sell it for a lot of money, and uh, Disney uh, do a crackdown, and they ask OpenSea to remove uh, the art because it's breaking a copyright. So the asset will disappear, the owner will still have the token, but the asset will be uh, gone. So the thing that I'm interested in and that we are working on uh, at, uh, at Everdreamsoft is to fill this gap um, of uh, the relationship between the asset and the token. And we're building a chain with a new uh, consensus algorithm uh, that we call proof of democracy. It's a chain to certify uh, the relationship between the asset and the token. And uh, the, basically it's the notary that we're missing on chain. So there is a lot of fake, 80% of OpenSea mints are fake token. So we need a solution. So either we go to a centralized solution like a, a notary or someone, a curator or something. But what we want to build is something decentralized, something where everybody contributes to uh, the certification. So if you are interested, we're, we are not communicating about the project yet publicly, but um, if you want some uh, insight, don't hesitate to contact me or to have a, uh, a look on, yeah, on the, uh, the future uh, of, uh, of NFTs. <laughs> Do we have time for questions? Two minutes for questions. Any question? Uh, I know you just said, hi, thank you. I know you just said you wouldn't explain what um, the new thing that you're working in proof of democracy is and how it works, but can you give some insight? So um, wh when it comes to, uh, to blockchain, we have proof of work and proof of stakes. Uh, proof of work um, is work that's, that is made by machines. So simple calculation that machine can do. When it comes to certification, it's a human work because you cannot ask a machine to certify something. So basically the work that the human does to certify, to verify, to make research 
um, is, uh, is the, 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 the core of, uh, of proof of democracy. And basically, you are staking a token on your a cert certificate. So if you make some research and say, okay, this is a, a true uh, project or it's a true art, I, s I know the artist, uh, then you put token at stake to, um, to, uh, for the certification. And then there is incentive for other people uh, to attack or to, uh, to challenge the certificate. So people, anybody uh, can say, okay, no, this is a fake. And they, they will have also to stake token in their denunciation. And then, um, I won't go into too much detail, but there is appeal and, and some justice system built in. Okay, so thank you. Uh, one more, one last. Very, very quick. Quick, quick one, uh, what are your plans on the gaming side to bring things forward? So on the gaming side, I'm a, I'm a big believer in co-creation and DAOs, and I think everything will go this way. So I would like the games or what we produce to be not created only by us, but created by the community. And for this, we need tools um, to certify the creation, to certify uh, who is the author and, and everything, and to offer this future, uh, there's still tools to be built, but this is where I think the, uh, the gaming industry will go. I think it's over. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you need to ask the master. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, I, I was actually wondering, because you started creating something in 2015, if I'm correct, and how is it creating right now in the market we are in, in with NFTs and all those things? Is there a big difference? Um, yes, and uh, Theo Goodman will uh, talk uh, about uh, vintage uh, NFTs, which is the, uh, the we, we, are, we, we are on it. So recently, last year, there was a craze, a big craze around the cards that uh, our rarest cards were sold for um, $50 now it's uh, selling for half a million, around half a million. So we got a huge, huge uh, craze and rediscovery of uh, the first NFTs. So uh, those are very valuable because they're rare. So today's NFT, there is a lot, but uh, 2015 NFT, there is really, uh, really a few. But Theo uh, is gonna talk more about it. Thank you, thank you. Clap, give him, give him a round of applause. Thank you.